All right, here we are at the explain to section for this uh, Geometry A credit 2. And um, we're going to find a sequence of rigid motion. So we're going to combine everything that we've learned to, um, to figure out how one shape moved into a different place. So it can be a bit of a detective story, hence the explain the, uh, all this, um, this picture of a black and white detective and, and all that stuff. So um, you can go and read the explain to section if you want and even go through this uh, example. Uh, I'm going to assume that you did and just jump into the your turn section here um, and we're going to be in, in question number one here we have quadrilateral JKLM which is congruent to quadrilateral um, uh, WXYZ and um, we're going to be um, trying to figure out how this shape over here moved over here All right? so um, again, if you if you are having trouble with your 3D spatial reasoning, this might be a bit of a stretch, and so you might want to write all the uh, coordinate points down just to help you keep track of what's going on. But um, if uh, if your spatial reasoning isn't too bad, um, you can follow along with me. So basically, when I when I take a look at an image like this, I can already see that that this uh, this small side, right? that is exactly one unit long it maps to that one right there on the top so whereas whereas this one was at the uh, was at the bottom of the shape now it's at the top so that tells me that some kind of a reflection took place right so so um, if I were to reflect this across the x-axis where would this end up this shape would end up uh, let me see here and then uh, let me see two units down let's see so I'm gonna reflect this uh, JKLM across the x-axis here so you end up with that shape <coughs> now when you have that shape it becomes a matter of translation it looks like so this shape is gonna go one two units to the left and then one unit down okay but take note when when I say two units when I say two units to the left is not just two right because each each hash mark is actually two so it's going to be actually four units to the left and uh, two units down or two yeah two units down so this is what our coordinate notation is going to be so um, let me see it's going to be a reflection oops it's going to be a reflection and a translation okay so coordinate notation for the transformations you use is going to be uh, reflection across the x-axis is going to end up looking like this x comma negative y and then this is also going to map to the uh, translation x minus 4 y minus 2 okay so hopefully that made sense if that still didn't make sense uh, talk to your teacher so um, it looks like here they actually want us to write it out in English. Um, reflection across the x-axis and uh, translation by vector negative 4 comma negative 2. Oops, it's not going to be a regular parenthesis, it's this pointy. Thing. Okay, so oh, they wanted to check our answers. Okay, didn't realize that J K L M, and so this is where all you spatial reasoning folks um, might get some uh, help here, keeping track of all this information. So J, let me see J, and this is a little bit tricky because remember each line is two units. So J, it looks like it's at six comma two. K is at 8 comma 2. L is at, what is that? 6 comma 6. Uh, and M is at negative 2 comma 6. Okay, and then the first transformation. So J prime, K prime, L prime, and M prime. Right, remember that shape? Let me move this back. It's going to be. Uh, one unit up and two over back here. So, 
at that point, we are, um, you can see j is going to be at negative, or sorry, 6 comma negative 2. Oops. J is going to be at 6 comma negative 2. K is going to be at 8 comma negative 2. Um, oh, you know what? Even without looking at it, right? If we're, if we're doing, if we're doing according to this uh, transformation, right? We're just going to change the y values to opposite signs, right? So let's verify this. L should be at 6 comma negative 6, which it is, 6 comma negative 6. And then negative 2 comma negative 6 for the last one, negative 2 comma negative 6, which it is. So that's good. Okay. And then for the second transformation, we're just going to subtract 4 from the x value and y, 2 from the y value. So j double prime, k double prime, l double prime, m double prime. So let's see. Um, x minus 4 is going to be uh, 2. Let's, let's do all the x values first, right? Uh, 8 minus 4 is 4. 6 minus 4 is 2. Negative 2 minus 4 is negative 6. And then uh, negative 2 minus 2 is negative 4. Uh, negative 2 minus 2 is negative 4. Uh, negative 6 minus 2 is negative 8. And negative 6 minus 2 is negative 8 as well. Okay, so. Um, I don't know why they put a, a figure 2, but it's, it's going to be all the same as as uh, the other ones, right? Or maybe they wanted W. Yeah, that's what they wanted. Um, I, I'm lazy. I'm not going to write it again. But X, uh, W, X, Y, Z are, are all going to have the same coordinate points as, as J double prime, K double prime, L double prime, and M double prime. Okay, so um, do the two rigid motions map one finger? Yes. Why or why not? Man, how do you answer that question? Um, because the let's let's just say that the reflection and translation preserves uh, or reflection and translation is rigid motion. Translation uh, preserve. Can I say this? The rigid, preserve the rigid motion. Uh, I don't know. I'm just gonna say it. Preserve the rigid motion.